Hello, good evening, good evening, good evening. You know what time it is. It is Wednesday, 9 p.m. Eastern. You're watching Wind Down Wednesday, and I'm your host, Amelia Fortes, Self Love TV Productions. And it is Valentine's episode. We got Valentine's Day coming up this Sunday. And as you are popping on, please say hello in the comments so I can say hi. If you are catching this on the replay, please give us a hashtag replay. And if you're watching this on YouTube, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button and push that notification bell so you can be notified every week when we upload new self-love episodes. If this is your first time here, welcome. Thank you so much for being here. If this is your second millionth time here, we've been going strong all throughout quarantine since April 2020. Welcome back. Thank you so much for being here. I'm so, so grateful for you. So tonight, we are going to be talking about money, honey, but before we get into that, you know what we always do. We start off with your self-love astrology weather report. So what's going on in the cosmos today? What do I want to say about that? Hey, Jeremy, nice to see you here. Again, say hello in the comments so I can say hi. Okay, so y'all know we are in Mercury Retrograde. But Mercury will be stationing direct next week, and we have a new moon tomorrow. Basically, what is going on in the cosmos this week is big Aquarius energy. If you're an Aquarius, if you love an Aquarius, if you got Aquarian aspects, shout yourself out. I love my Aquarians. I love Aquarius energy. However, admittedly, it is not my comfort zone. So the reason why I say big Aquarius energy is because number one, the sun is in Aquarius. So it's Aquarius season for all you Aquarian babies. Um, late February, early March. Or wait, no, sorry. Early February, late January, early February. And um, actually, there are four other planets currently in Aquarius. We've got Mercury. We've got Venus. We've got Jupiter. We've got Saturn. We've got the age of Aquarius. I talked a lot about that last week. Um, so there's a little bit more that I want to say about this big Aquarius energy. Essentially, what Aquarius wants you to know is it doesn't want to hear about your drama. It really doesn't. Aquarius is the opposite of Leo. And as you might know, Leo is all about the heart and about drama and about the lioness and about being the king or queen of the jungle. And Aquarius is that kind of cool, calm, well, maybe not so calm, kind of calm because Aquarius is a fixed sign, but that cool energy. It's an air sign. So it's a lot about the intellect and mentality. And all of this big Aquarian energy is about forward movement and progression, especially in the realms of social media, communication, collaboration, connection. That's why you're seeing apps like Clubhouse and Stereo blow up. There's literally technology that is finally ripe and ready to explode and, and create communication and networks and collaborations in ways that we have never, ever, ever seen before, in ways that we only dreamed possible before. So it's really, really exciting times. However, at the same time, especially if you're like me and Aquarian energy isn't your comfort zone, air the air element is my least percentage of elements. So it air is always my least comfort zone. Um, it's been really, the universe has been giving you a lot of opportunities to let go and purge of old shit that doesn't serve you anymore. And that could be relationships, that could be ways of being, that could be ways of doing business, ways of doing your career, it could be belief systems, it could be old emotional patterns. So if you are feeling a lot of disruption and a lot of emotion right now, it's because I know it's hard because y'all, your girl has been going through some shit the last couple of weeks, okay? And y'all know if you were here last week's episode, you know I was going through it. I still am. But what's exciting about that is that these difficult things that are happening to you right now, 
these difficult experiences that you're going through are happening for you because the universe is literally trying to midwife you and launch you to your next quantum leap quantum leap. I'm not saying the next little baby step. Like the universe is literally preparing you for your next quantum leap. And you you can't go into your next quantum leap if you're carrying old baggage from the past. So if relationships have been breaking down, systems in your life have been breaking down, it is all for a greater purpose. And sometimes things need to fall apart so that better things can come together. And you're likely experiencing this at the individual level, but we're obviously experiencing this at the collective level, at the global level. We're still reeling from this year plus long, almost year long pandemic now. I'm like, what is even time? It's not even been a year, but it feels like it's been 10 years. Um, so globally, systems are breaking down. We saw what happened a couple weeks ago and it is continuing to happen in terms of our economic systems. Um, racial injustice systems are breaking down. We're seeing that with all of the social justice movements that are gaining a lot more traction than ever before. Accountability is being requ requested, required, demanded. Um, shit is coming to light. Like people's deep, dark secrets have been coming to light. Famous people, not so famous people. Like I've been seeing it everywhere. And while it can feel chaotic, that's that air energy. And while it can feel emotional, um, it's all happening for a greater purpose. So really all we can do is understand that we are not in control and we are just along for the ride. And the sooner you can just let go and say, Jesus, take the wheel, the sooner you can really be prepared. And just know this is a launch pad for you. This moment right now is a launch pad for you. So you need to shed those old layers, those old ways of being, that old shit that is not serving you so that you can really jump in and step in into your next greatest self. So I am so excited to see who you get to be tomorrow and next year, next month in 10 years. And I'm so excited for all of the layers that you are shedding. And at the same time, I am so, so holding you in my heart and in my soul and sending you healing energy and love and all of that because I know a lot of you need it. Some of you are comfortable in this energy right now. So you're like, I'm chilling. I'm cool. For those of y'all, good for you. But if you're like me and going through the emotions and feeling literally like a, a caterpillar turning into a butterfly. I'm with you. I hear you. I know it's hard, baby girl, baby boy. You're going to get through it. You've just got to, let's see, what, what can I leave you with with that? You just got to let yourself go through it. Like literally give yourself space, like a lot more space. And I've been saying this since last week, slow down, slow down. I don't mean stop because I know you're all busy people and you got shit to do. But slow down, be with yourself, feel your feelings, um, deepen relationships with the people who love you, receive their love, receive their support, and, and ask for help, allow people to help you. And again, like I said, this time is ripe for collaboration. So find your people, let go of the do nothing bitches that haven't been serving you, the toxic people. I know it hurts. Go through that grief, lick your wounds. But from those broken pieces, you will forge a stronger you than you ever thought possible. And I'm so freaking excited to see that version of you. So that's what I have for today. Um, your self-love astrology weather report, big Aquarius energy. And I am so excited for tonight, y'all, because I am about to bring on my lovely guests for tonight. Tonight's topic is money. And um, what can I say about these two? They're going to they're gonna introduce themselves in a bit, but what can I say? We have been just over a month now strong, almost a month and a half of building an amazing community, our Financial Friday crew. Um, we have been doing a weekly show on the Stereo app. Actually, let me put it up, pull it up real quick. 
We have been doing a weekly show on the Stereo app every Friday morning at 8 a.m. Eastern talking all things money, the emotions, the strategies, the tools, the tactics, all of that stuff, and just building such an amazing community and a weekly clubhouse room on Clubhouse on Fridays at 1 p.m. Eastern. And y'all, people are inspired. They are making their first investments. They are shedding old money programs, scarcity programs. They are stepping into abundance. They are learning that investing and wealth and, and, and a strong financial future isn't just reserved for old white guys in suits. It's reserved for people like you and me. And you get to you get to um, build your financial future according to what's right for you and your personality. And I'm going to bring them on because I'm so excited. They're here. They're looking handsome. So I told them to look handsome and cute. So they're here. Here they are. We've got Evan and EJ. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for being here. Say hello, guys. Introduce yourselves. Hey, what's up? <laughs> How's it going? Good evening. Hey, it's great to see everybody, and it's great to be here. I mean, I'm enjoying myself already. I love it. I love it. And what what y'all drinking? I didn't I didn't talk about that. So Wine Down Wednesday is a show. We're here. I usually have a glass of wine. Actually, I haven't drank in a long time during Wine Down Wednesday. My audience here usually likes to have a drink with me. So what are what are we drinking tonight? I'm a, I'm already a few uh, shots in, but I've, I'm, I got a little bit of Henny right there in my cup. But uh, yeah, because anything is possible. Anything is possible with Henny. <laughs> you already know it. You already what are you know thinking, it. Evan? What do, what do you got? I got, I got that Stella Rosa Black, just nice and simple. <laughs> nice, simple wine. I love it. I love it. Well, tonight, I, as you can see, I'm Valentine's Day inspired. So we've got a, a nice red martini glass. And I would I like love it. to say, I would like to say that this is like a chocolate covered strawberry martini, but it's not. I probably could have lied and told y'all that, um, but it's actually, it's a chocolate liqueur with some vodka. So um, your girl's going to get a little lit tonight, but that's cool because we're here. We're here to have some fun, talk about money, <laughs> answer some questions. Um, oh, nice, Jeremy. Drinking tea, no alcohol since January 1st. Good for you. Okay. That's good. And yes, that's good. You, you've been healing and it's been hard. Yes, I know. I know it's been hard, but... We're here, we're here, we're together. Yeah. So, fellas, what do we want to talk about? So we're talking about money. Actually, first, I would love for each of you to introduce yourselves to the audience here and say what's up. And, and then maybe say a little bit about why you're so passionate about Financial Fridays and, and what we're building and, and what your vision is for that. So either one of you can go first. Well, um, hey, everybody. Good evening. This is EJ Gilliard. I'm actually from Rock Hill, South Carolina, like right outside of Charlotte. So um, for me, I thought it was a, a, an amazing opportunity to, you know, connect with Amelia. And, uh, you know, knowing Amelia, I've known her for a few years now. And, uh, and she, you know, we brought up the idea, what, 20, 2018, I want to say. And yeah, so, a couple of years ago. <laughs> yeah. And so, you know, um, we, we wanted to go ahead and and get it together now to go ahead and, and, and help people who are really trying to understand the market early because we're in the beginning of the year. I think it's the absolute best time to be, um, you know, just locking arms and making, making this happen. And, and Evan being the uh, great, great financial mind that he is, you know, it was a no brainer to, you know, have somebody who can compliment, you know? So I thought it was a, a great a combination of people just coming together and we're making an impact already. I'm excited. Oh yeah, guys. So I'm I'm Evan, and they they flatter me far too much, you know. <laughs> of course. <laughs> then I probably nah, Evan, Evan, you you stay humble. You stay humble. Like, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm gonna I'm gonna let you finish. <laughs> but yeah, guys, I'm I'm just I'm just a guy that's you know I'm I'm a financial analyst and investor, but I'm very very passionate about finance and about talking about money and just really seeing people taking that next step. And, you know, working with these two guys, well, you know, guy and girl, but, um, you know, working with them is, 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 is an amazing experience because both of them are very humble and we all share the same passion for just helping people and wanting to help people. And we're very much anti-guru culture. So, you know, we we make sure that we keep things very, you know, very copacetic and very cool 
and it's just very conversational. And that's what I love about working with them is that, you know, you don't, there's no pitching type of stuff going on. It's just real conversations about money. So, you know, um, that's one of the key reasons why I got involved in Financial Fridays and the reason why I'm, you know, I'm so eager to, you know, to get this information out to you guys like that. Yes, yes, I'm so excited. Yeah, so um, what EJ was saying, we actually did talk about it a few years ago because I was starting to learn about the currency market and foreign exchange, and EJ was teaching me about it. And I was just like, you have so much information and 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 your energy and the way you teach is so helpful and it's so different. Like, cause Okay, let's let me like back up a little bit. Like when y'all think about like financial education, or at least when I look at financial education, you got all these fancy people in their jets and in their suits and in their like Versace Gucci outfits and flexing real hard on the gram. But like, I don't really learn anything from from that. All all I learn, is, I, I feel bad about myself <laughs> looking at all this stuff. And, and even when I watch videos, there's just a lot of this like energy of like, this is what you need to do. Da -da 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 -da, the markets, buh, 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 buh. Right. And it's just all this energy. And when, um, when EJ was like teaching me, like we were on zoom and he was just, and I was just like, wow, like, I don't, I don't feel stupid. I don't feel dumb. I don't feel slow. I feel like <laughs> I can get it. It just really felt like a, you know, mano y mano, like same level playing field experience and a lot of the financial education that i've had or even just on youtube or podcasts or whatever is just yeah like that guru culture of just people talking at you and they don't say this but the energy just feels like if you don't do this then you're stupid and you're dumb and you're gonna be poor forever and right. broke right. mindset and da -da -da, and it's just i'm just like uh, number one i'm just trying to pay my bills and and try to secure my financial future for my family. Like I just, and I just want to do good in the world. And like, I don't need to be feeling this dumb or like, you know. So um, when I was talking with EJ a few years ago, I was like, and with me, like the healing work that I do, how I support people in helping them with move through their traumas and, and heal their emotions and really shed that old stuff because money, brings up so much of that. It brings up so much emotion and scarcity and, and all of this stuff. And I was like, together we could create something really, really cool. And like, this was a few years ago already. And we were like, yeah, you know, there's a lot going on right now, but that's something we definitely want to create at some point. I don't know how it's going to look. I don't know how it's going to pan out. And then I don't know, did the stars just align? And like I was saying earlier with the self love astrology weather report, you know, big Aquarius energy, it's the energy of progression, forward movement, collaboration, um, spreading the word and, 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 and helping more and more people at faster and faster rates. And so with apps like Clubhouse and Stereo and, um, you know, EJ and I kind of reconnecting around this vision that we started, it was just it just all kind of like fell together and we did our first episode and Evan was there at our first clubhouse and we were like, this is kind of sweet. We kind of got something here. So right, I, don't know if I mean, you, don't you know, like, I, I mean, yeah, you know, I think about the engagement that we got in the very beginning. I think people were kind of sort of trying to figure it out and figure us out, you know, like, you know, what are they trying to do here? You know, like what are they one of those people who are kind of like trying to get you to sign up to this program to do that? And no, nah. You know, we were just having an open forum conversation about real situations on investing and on, you know, getting into it. And so that intrigued people because they saw, oh, yeah, they're very different. You know, they're actually letting us speak. <laughs> they're letting us talk. You know, <laughs> I feel like people don't really get a chance to express themselves. And so I think that was uh, an eye opener for a lot of people, which is why a lot of people still stay for the duration of the entire, uh, you know, clubhouse or stereo that we're in. I don't really rarely ever see anybody leave because they want to hear what we have to say and they get to actually speak and, and voice their, their stories and experiences. You know, you know, everybody says they have a bad experience or a good experience, but you know, not a lot of people let them expound on what really happened, you know, and, and how can a, how can they um, develop from where they're, where they're at, you know, or what, or what happened to them, you know? So that's, that's unique about us. It's been right. so cool to hear everyone's story as well. And Evan, you know, because I mean, EJ and I, like I said, we've been talking about this for a couple of years now, but Evan, you kind of just waltzed into our clubhouse room that day. 
and something obviously like hooked you about it because you weren't part of the preparation discussions about it or even the first episode right so what 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 was it for you what happened clicked for you (laughs) ej like i see i see ej and then i'm like hey the bro got a call so let me jump on and that was literally just that's literally just how simple it was for me it's like i saw him because you know i you know me and him have been friends for like what two years now and you know, I've you know built a relationship with his family and things of that nature. So when I seen him on a call, you know, typically I all you know I'll, I'll click certain calls. Hey, Shabri, that's all right. What's that's going on, Shabri? But, What's uh, up? So typically, when we see when we see certain we see certain stuff with each other, like I'll support something he's doing, or he supports something I'm doing. So it was just literally just that I saw him doing a call, and I just jumped on. And these guys like come on stage. I'm like, oh sure, I'll come on stage. So it was like, it was literally just that. So it was like kind of just organic, you know? Right. Yeah, yeah. You and know? what made you stay? Cause I mean, that was like a few weeks ago now, but now you're like here and you're you're on the show with us every week on stereo and you're in the room with us every week on Clubhouse. Like what? I mean, I saw the, like, like, like I saw the writing on the wall from the beginning. Like when we, when we had that first call, I was like, you know what? That kind of clicked in a way that yeah it probably wasn't supposed to but it probably was so like you know like it wasn't it wasn't planned like it wasn't planned you know like me and ej didn't talk about hey i'm doing this that but when we kind of got on like i saw like the fluidity of how like our conversations were going and what was gonna like you know what it's something to this and you know as we just kept going like after like week two i was 100 percent certain i'm like yeah this thing is legit you know you ever seen um I forget what network it's on, but you know how um, certain actors and certain like public figures will go and do like the round table talk um, where it's just very open. There's not a, a, like a whole script on what they talk about. I kind of feel like it was that kind of vibe, you know? Um, you know, we kind of just kept it natural, just started the conversation and that's what we always do. Whether we're on the phone, you know, talking or, or whether it's, it's live like this, it's completely natural, you know what I mean? I love it. Well, let's 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 yeah. let's let's get into a conversation uh, about money and and talking about what is really going on. And of course, anyone watching, please comment any questions or anything you have. We can pull it up here on the screen. You've got a wealth of information right here, a wealth of information, knowledge, love, and experience. Um, so even if it's like, hey, I know I want to start investing, but I have no freaking clue. Like, what do I do? You can totally ask that. Or if you're into it and you have a more technical question, you can totally ask that. Um, whatever it is, just just getting into the conversation. Um, and also, please join us every week on the Stereo app. Now, I know I know we have a lot of apps and things, but yo, Stereo is actually really really cool. Um, and it looks yeah. like a it's a black background with an orange podcast microphone, and it's called Stereo, but. It's, it's kind of like merges radio with podcasting and it's all live. So if you can join us live, it's super fun. Like I literally feel like, I was like, I feel like it's D100 or Hot 97. I'd be like, what's up everybody? We're on the air. We live. Yeah, we love people can actually call in and ask questions. And it's, it's really, really cool. And we've talked about so much. We, we talked about the GameStop, Reddit, Wall Street bets situation. We had a lot of people call in and weigh in on what they saw, but also ask questions. We've had new investors and experienced investors come in and and talk about money and, and the whole situation. We talked about scarcity mindset, abundance mindset. We talked about how it is ridiculous and and um, educational malpractice that we don't learn about money in school, like literally from the time we're even like five or four years old, like we should start learning about money, but there is no requirement to learn about money ever in any, well, I don't know in any, but I think, I don't know, maybe there's more now, but I know a few years ago there was only one like financial edu- official financial education program at, at a college. And it's like, we should be learning about money from the time we're like five or even earlier. And if you don't learn about it at home or what you do learn about home tends to dictate your financial future. So um, we, so we go on stereo and then again, we go on clubhouse and in, in the living room, it's kind of like the, the after show where we come into the right. living room and we talk about <laughs> what happened on stereo 
And it's a lot of fun. And, and that's where like some real healing and coaching and, and support happens um, in that clubhouse room because it's a much more like chill vibe and we get to reflect on the show. Yeah. So, because um, you know, like I feel like with, cl I feel like with a uh, clubhouse, it's allowing um, a lot of people to really come out of their comfort zone. Like, you know, clubhouse is allowing a lot of people to actually, f it, it forces people to listen. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you know, it, 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 you have to listen on Clubhouse. You got to be, be auditory, you know, and then you have to, you know, if you want to be vocal and go through and express your, your your thoughts, you have that option. You have that platform. So, like, I feel like Clubhouse was genius. Stereo was genius because it gives you the ability to actually tune in, listen, but also you can engage, you know. And so if you and then you could pick the genre of what you want to listen to, you know, um, if there's something that doesn't really interest you, then, you know, so be it, you know, fall back from it. But you know, you can find something on Clubhouse that does pique your interest. When you start that Clubhouse account or app, they ask you, what's, what, are, what are your interests? You know, what are you interested in? Like, what are things that, that you are currently doing as hobbies, you know? And so it kind of, like, by certain algorithms, will pick and choose what your interests are, and it'll match that up. So people who come into Financial Fridays with us on Fridays at, at 1, they're already with the mindset of, okay, we're talking about, you know, self-love and and how to go into you know learning how to invest in the right psychology into it. So, I think it's I think it's a great platform, and you're going to see a lot of podcasts being birthed from just Clubhouse by itself. Thanks. Yes, yes. we downloaded yeah. it last week. Woohoo! We hope to yeah. see you live on the show. Definitely call in. Yeah, you just, definitely gotta have to breathe. Like just yeah, just, yeah. Say breathe. Oh, I'm you. psychology of like investing yeah. and and yeah, yeah. macroeconomics and studying economies. Like she's you know she's awesome yeah. so we definitely gotta have her own what, oh what's up what's up tp it. tony black what's going on <laughs> yeah yeah oh, yeah there's so many people coming on hey taylor yeah I call her tp hey, she's a, she's a trader yeah she's an investor too yeah yeah hey yeah. ebony all these people come i have y'all on my phone because i can see when some of y'all sign on but definitely say hello as you're popping on so I, I really love a couple of the things that we talked about in, in previous clubhouses and stereos. And I would love to just bring that here to this show because this gets uploaded to YouTube and it lives on there forever. Um, some of the most common questions, you know, like, how do I get started? What, you know, I, I think I really liked when we had that um, conversation. So we've got people all across the board watching this show um, in terms of experience. Um, and I think a lot of people know that they should be investing or they should be doing something better with their money. They just don't know what or like, you know, they're working their job. And a lot of people, you know, they make pretty good money. They might have some extra like and people don't know, like, how much extra do I need? Like, what do I need to start get started? What do I need to do? So would love to hear what both of you have to say to that. And I know you both have similar and also different perspectives. So would love to hear from both of you, like for the person that wants to get started, for the person who's curious, like what would you say to them? Oh, I mean, look, stop overthinking. Right. Get out of your own mind. You know what I mean? Um, that's the biggest thing with a lot of people is they overthink and then they will do their due diligence until they do nothing. You know, um, I feel like it's important to research but also it's important to do um, because you can practice and, and, and teach yourself how to swim perfect. But if you don't jump in the water and, and, and get in practice, but, I mean, and even get in the water, like that's, there's no use. There's no purpose of, you know, of, of learning it unless it's like a dire situation. Like now people are starting to invest. Now people are trying to learn how to, you know, really understand how important it is. Like, you know, more than anything right now, in my timeline, I see everybody talking about crypto. Everybody's talking about, you know, stocks all because of the wave of people who are engaged into it, you know? And so um, I think that that's important. You know, I feel like just over, not, not overthinking and not um, doubting yourself so much is going to really help you just take that next step. I, I mean, that's, that's my opinion. Yeah. And, um, you know, to follow up what he's saying, you know, never, never get into investing because you heard someone else say something or because it's something it's it's some you know buzz going around it like when you get started investing invest based on your own principles and that's really what i that's really what i believe in teaching is that you in investing is a personal thing it's not something where you know like me and ej may have two different views of the market right now 
or we may he may like different types of companies that 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 I feel good about. Like I may like right now, I invest in cannabis. I invest in EV market. You know, like companies for electric electric vehicles. That's what I believe is going to get allow me to get the best growth potential right now. EJ may feel differently. He may he may he he may want to go with more secured industries. So you know, invest based on your own principles and invest in what makes sense to you. And stop looking for somebody to convince you on what to invest in or give you an idea of, of what to buy and just start and like start developing your own ideas and your own feelings and your own personal beliefs. I said this on Clubhouse and and I think it was like very, very, you know, very good to share. But like your portfolio should tell a story about you. And when you when you look at when you look at the type of portfolio that you want to develop. It should it should tell a story based on what you believe and and how you're feeling. So if you shop at Walmart and you buy things from Walmart all the time, buy Walmart stock. It makes sense. You're giving them enough of your money anyway. So you know, like those are those are just really really simple things. And you know, that's probably the number one thing that mess up a lot of new investors from the beginning is that when they get started, they get started and they look for somebody to tell them whether it's the TV. Or whether it's a social media influencer, they look for somebody to tell them where to invest their money. And it's like, it's your money. Like you earn it, you, <laughs> you work for it. It's like do what you want with your money, but make sure that you know and you feel good about where your money is going. The last thing I want somebody to do is invest in something that they have no clue what the company does. They have no clue what the income is like what the projection of this company is like they just they're just clueless and they're just investing because somebody said oh it's gonna go to the moon it's like right know, that's not good for a newbie once you get once you get seasoned and you have you know you know how to do proper due diligence and proper analysis and really you know have a process then you maybe can look at something that somebody might say like oh okay let me do this research on amc and see if i think this company is gonna go where they're saying it's gonna go so right, right. that's that that's my main thing is just avoid the avoid the, the the hype beast type of stocks and just really get focused in on what where you want to go and what you want out of your portfolio yeah because you know it, for, for me it's like a lot of people you know i give a million analogies it's like a lot of people um are in the car but they got somebody in the passenger seat that knows the direction that they don't know so they're keep they constantly ask okay what our turn next where do i go to next but they don't really have a full direction on what they're doing. So they don't really understand it fully without because they don't do their own research or it's not something that is in their niche or something that they're they're into, you know, and so they then go to that person. Hey, you know, what about what, what's going on with this stock today? You know, well, did you research it? You know, have you been keeping keeping an eye on it? You know, like, why do I have to keep on being on the passenger seat with you? You know, and, and give you the direction, you know, it's up to you to have to make that and take that next step. So I absolutely agree. Yeah, and I'll add this before I go back to Amelia, but never, ever, ever buy a stock without looking at the financials. Mm. Ever. Mm -hmm. It's like in any way, like, don't you want to drive your own car? Like, do you right. always want to be like, what right. do I? What, don't you want to plug in your own GPS? Don't you want to go where you want to go? And um, I just want to bottom line what you both are saying. And there's amazing, amazing comments that I'm seeing that I'll share in a sec. But, and we talked about this on, uh, I think it was episode three or four, but there, there's basically two extremes. I like to keep things like visual, right? So on one extreme, and EJ, you spoke about this first, people get into analysis paralysis and do nothing. They do all this research, they, they get in their feelings and scared, and then they do nothing. And honestly, like that was me for like a very, very long time. I, well, I'll speak more about that, but so they do nothing, and they're just watching it all happen and nothing is moving. And they're just like, I know I shouldn't. I know I want to. I know I want to. I know I want to. But I'm doing nothing. I'm doing nothing. Years go by. Months go by. Days go by. I'm doing nothing. But then you got people on this other end of the spectrum that are like FOMO. They're missing out. Like, oh, my God, I saw some shit on Twitter. Elon Musk tweeted about some coin that was actually created as a joke. But because right. Elon Musk tweeted about it, now I'm all into it. You know, And so there's this like back and forth between the FOMO and then the analysis paralysis. And sometimes we just bounce back and forth between the two and what happens, we end up exhausted and then we get burned 
either because we're not doing anything or we get burned because we made some dumb mistake. And then we're like, oh, see, investing is not for me. It's not worth it, blah, 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 all that stuff. But my goal, my intention, my mission, and I think our mission is to help you like stop bouncing back and forth from these two and getting exhausted or staying in one and burn, like burning yourself over here and just carrying all this baggage over here and find that sweet spot in the middle where you are, like Evan was saying, telling a story with your portfolio. Like when someone looks at your portfolio, like them getting to know who you are because you're investing based on your personality. And here's the thing, even if you pick a loan, whether it's stocks or currency or real estate or whatever, business, intellectual property, whatever, whatever lane you pick, um, it's it's like, it's gotta like fit you and, and what you wanna do and something that you're interested in doing and something that means something to you. And, it, and, and, you, and even regardless of whatever lane you pick, there are still different lanes within that lane that are more suited for your personality right. and, and your goals, right? Are you in it for long-term? Are you in it for short-term? Are you more of like, I wanna get in, get out, get in, get out, get off, <laughs> you know, right? Or am right. I here to like build a relationship? And there is no right or wrong answer. There's only your answer. And that's the difference between this analysis paralysis over here, fear of missing out, making dumb, quick snap decisions over here and finding your lane. And that's really what we want to create with Financial Fridays is helping people find their lane. And just from what I know, knowing EJ for a few years and Evan for a few weeks now, like y'all are really good at helping people find their lane, you know, and I'm here for like the healing, the emotionality of it. Cause your emotion, your shit's going to come up when you start doing something, when you do something new. And so just together, mm -hmm. it's, this really amazing collaboration um, to really help a lot, a lot, a lot of people. And yeah, Shabri agrees, you know, yeah, GameStop got a lot of folks hopping in the game. So here's the thing about that. And, and I think probably every, like all of y'all will agree with me. Like it got a lot of people in their FOMO, right? And and that's what, you know, Shabri is saying here too, right? FOMO. But at least I'm happy that it at least got people thinking about, should I, should I invest? Cause here's the thing, like we want y'all to invest. But like not from like analysis paralysis and not from fear of missing out, right? Um, and TP here is saying, yeah, that's key. People don't want to do their own research. What I like, you may not like. What I might risk, you might not risk. Exactly. We all have different risk um, thresholds. We all have different personalities. So speaking to that, like from, from my own experience, what I mean when I say I want you to learn how to use your money and build your financial future according to your personality. And I share, I've shared this a lot on, on the stereo app and on our episodes, you know, I got into real estate because there's a lot of hype around real estate. Like my first toe dip into investing was into real estate. I was wholesaling and I was looking to um, buy and, and lease for student housing and all that stuff. And so, but I real like real estate is not really my personality. It doesn't go with me. And I learned that because I was like, why is this more of an uphill battle than it needs to be? And it's because I don't have a inherent passion for it. And I, I learned this pretty quickly because like even someone like my sister, other people, they're always like looking, they just naturally look at that kind of stuff. And I was like, that's not my vibe. And so for me, the reason why I was like, oh, you know, Forex, the currency market and crypto is kind of more of my vibe. And for those of you who don't know, like I have a degree in computer engineering, like I'm a super math science nerd. So like even hearing about like learning about the technology of blockchain and, and on the different <laughs> type of coins. Like, that shit, no, that like that shit excites me. And, yeah. and I'm a traveler. I love learning different languages, different cultures, so and different currencies. So like learning about it, like when I was learning with EJ, like that shit was exciting me because I naturally, my personality has already a foot into that kind of culture and into that kind of information. So it doesn't feel like a chore or boring to research about that stuff. It's exciting. Whereas with real estate, like types of paint and tiles and like, like, like and again, if it's your thing, look, power to you, because I know it's other people's things. But like for me, I'm just like, oh, my God, like that, that doesn't. Exist. And I'm sure researching the technology about crypto probably makes other people feel like that. So like yeah, the moment I pulled up that chart, <laughs> you were like, yes, this is my like, stay in it. 
and and love it and and something that you'll want to learn because you know um building wealth is a long slow boring process mm -hmm. and it's got to be something that you want to stick with that you want to build with I mean, think about like with relationships right like who would you want to go through the bad times with who would you want to stick with who would you want to be in the trenches with it's the same with your investments by the way y'all this vodka is hitting so i'm gonna stop right there i'm gonna let y'all come in there's nothing wrong with that you know what i mean i mean i, I definitely <laughs> feel you though no i mean that's that's absolutely true you know i, I think that it's so key because yeah, you I know, Shea Bria, like hey. Shea Bria. I hope I want y'all in our clubhouse yeah. and I want y'all in our rooms and in our stereos. I could feel your energy. I knew it was going to be a good vibe. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah Shabri, Shabri, I'm telling you, she's dope. Like she vibe, she vibe just right with, with everything we do. Right. Yeah, she's definitely an intellectual. Like seriously, I mean, like she she digs deep on the detail. You know what I mean? And and plus, like she keeps it and. and she lets it be her own, you know, like she she can take information. It's same, same thing with Taylor. You know, Taylor is a, um, a really, really uh, she's a seasoned investor, too. And so it's, it's the same thing, you know, so we got great people. And uh, yeah, I'm, I, I really agree with that. And then plus also um, you talk about relationships as it pertains to um, understanding um, your own finances and your own, um, you know, in investing journey. I feel like they both have to go hand in hand. You know, a lot of times I'll tell you my own. Me, me personally, you know, I had to learn how to balance that and, and understand that balance. You know, I could be imbalanced in my relationship and have balance in my finances. And then I have it the other way around. And that would hurt our relationship. You know, like, um, you know, I, I, I definitely one thing about my prior relationship. Most recent. The first thing she asked me was, can we go over financials? I absolutely love that because that's something that I feel like is important in relationships. You know, I, I haven't had somebody who I've been with. Who asked me that question i feel like that was amazing you know so um that's something that really helps you understand the importance of being um equal in that kind of mindset you know what i mean and so um with dealing with that and, and, and understanding self-love like for me i had to learn that um internally i had to first get my mentality right um to balance out my self-love and, and and loving myself within um understanding what my worth and potential is for this world, but also what my value is, because I'm a I'm, I'm a stock in myself. You know, I have to show and carry my value, whether I was working a job or whether I was investing in something. Yes, that stock and that investment has value, but also EJ, you know, I do too. You know what I mean? And so I have to understand, you know, what my true value in this world is. And so um, if I'm not protruding that to who I'm with, then that's going to cause an imbalance. You know, if I'm if I'm not, if I'm not being true to myself, then that's going to cause an imbalance. Um, overall so i have to I have to learn that over time you know yeah Evan, yeah. i know you're a happily married man i would let like what's your take on like relationships and finances and stuff like that oh it's 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 key is very substantial to to surviving and to lasting um you know 70 70 over 70 percent of marriages that do not work um can can be you know can be traced back to financial troubles or financial distress or or you know financial imbalance and you know like it always starts the root to something else like you have a financial trouble then you find out something else you know so like having that been been on one been on one accord and been on the same page financially I think is 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 more important than just saying oh we vibe like I get it you know what I'm saying I get vibes are good but you know what I'm saying like like you can have a good vibe and y'all can have a bunch of fun until poop is the fan, you know, like right. when, poop is, when poop is the fan, then you really gotta, you really gotta, you really gotta figure out what somebody, what somebody's made of. So, you know, when you, when you live in, when you guys are living together and a major financial emergency come up and you guys haven't been saving anything and now you gotta look at each other and say, okay, how are we going to come up with this eight grand to fix X, Y, or Z? And right when it gets real so it's like having that having when it comes to relationships like especially from us culturally um you know just from a family standpoint it's not something that we talk about a lot growing up and i know ej can 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 um you know can can pick you know can relate to what i'm saying is that you know like not too many you know in our culture not too many families talk about money like that and you know not too many families make sure that hey you know 
um, you know, where are we at financially? You know, are we are we saving? You know, are we investing for the future? Are we, you know, are we are we putting money to the side for this? Are we putting money to the side for that? So that's not something that is 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 a cultural norm that I think has to be shifting into, you know, with our generation being the majority now in the in the country. I believe it has to shift to that. And in the next, you know, 10, 20 years, I think that where we are as as a community of people and as minorities will be due in direct proportion to how well we successfully plan financially and how we balanced the relationships that we have based around those goals. So, you know, um, it's everything. It means everything to a substantial relationship, to the health of a relationship. I mean, it, it's not like it doesn't like money alone by itself is not going to make a relationship work but right. it can it can darn sure kill one you know right and if you know if, if you don't if you don't properly address that and if you don't have that within like with clear vision with that you know it can it things can get messy sure. <laughs> can get very messy. So sure yeah. yeah that's the biggest and most important conversation that is typically left out of relationships in early stages exactly and you know it i mean i was gonna bring something kind of unrelated but kind of related so like even sex right like and i relate money to sex honestly well i relate everything to everything because one of my top five strengths is connectedness so i'm always like connecting the dots but like sex and money are two things that bring up so much of our stuff our emotions our traumas and because we have poor sex and financial education in the traditional education system, we're left to learning about it at home. And many homes, like you both have touched on, either don't talk about it at all or have like really, really just poor, just bad, just bad, just bad, bad, bad. And yet, money and sex are like vital parts of life like sex is literally required for the forwardness of humanity and money at least until we move into a society that doesn't need money like it's it's vital yet we're not talking about it when we're talking about it we're highly emotional and in in a way that's bad because of course Emotional to me is good. Emotions aren't bad, but we're highly emotional in a way that we don't have awareness or consciousness or the tools to navigate it successfully for both of those topics. And people don't freaking talk about it. They don't talk about it at the beginning. Like I think y'all should talk about it when even y'all are just friends before you even like touch each other. It should be like, so what are you into? Money and sex, right? Um, and Shabri is just dropping so many gems, so I gotta share Shabri and and uh, TP are dropping. Oh my God, Sid is in the house, y'all. Okay, hold up, we're on Shabri right now. What up, my Sid? Um, it all on? stems from a lack of financial education through our younger years. It becomes something quiet, my privacy, but it's key to have that conversation in romantic relationship. And it, again, finance, money, and sex, money and sex, always. <laughs> in the house by the way y'all sid fernandez is my clubhouse brother we do a daily we do a daily clubhouse every morning at 8 30 a.m eastern literally monday through friday like every day called confessions of an entrepreneur and it's also it's very similar vibes with financial friday we talk about the real shit just casual conversation none of this guru talking at you yeah make a million dollars in 90 seconds this is like yo i'm a human Mr. Miyagi Sensei's. Right. <laughs> I'm a human being. You're a human being. We're all human beings. Let's help each other out. And Sid, Sid's got so much, so much wisdom. So thank you so much for being here and joining the conversation, allowing the education to come from other avenues when it needs to come from us, the parents. Exactly. Exactly. Fact. Exactly. Yeah, that's yeah. fact. That's big fact. That's true. Oh yeah. Yeah. It has. <laughs> A very, by the way, y'all, give Sid a follow on Instagram. Sid, if you want to drop your Instagram, go ahead. His Instagram stories just give me life when he like wakes up his kids in the morning and just bringing that cafecito energy. <laughs> so give Sid a follow. Um, Shabri, yes, it become it has become a very sensitive subject, both money and sex. I mean, like they're they're so tied together, and there's a reason why there's a whole chapter on sex transmutation in Think and Grow Rich. 
It's like that sexual energy, that creative energy, that sacral chakra energy, money, sex, root chakra energy. It's all that the lower chakras, lower not meaning worse, but lower meaning more earthly three-dimensional human <laughs> chakras versus the more spiritual ones up here. Um, it's we don't talk about it. We, we get to talk about it in very, hold on, my mouth is like not working. Um, here we go. Also y'all, I'm officially tipsy. <laughs> we, <laughs> we see. <laughs> oh, it's, been, it's been a really good lit now. Yeah, okay. it's all right. Really good. Um, or at the very least, I guess you're, is what you're saying, break the taboos we create around those two major topics. Yes. Break the taboos. Let's talk about it. Let's get uncomfortable. Let's make it weird. <laughs> love hearing you guys. Love having you here. Yep, this is Sid's handle. Go follow Sid. Uh, mortgage con cafecito extraordinaire. Here we go. Yes. Parents mad at Cardi B about her music. Like, it's her responsibility to parent the public kids. Girl, I know you saw the same post that I saw, didn't you? Because didn't she's, she had some video or something where she was like... I don't need to parent your kids like this. Watch what your kids are looking at. Um, <laughs> Jerry, it on that. Yeah, that's what it is. <laughs> no, but that's that's true. Yeah, she's right about that. Yeah, <laughs> it's very true. I mean, you know, I mean, like we we uh, I mean, we're in a world right now where really music is what creates lifestyle for people. You know, like music is like what people go to and cling to for trends for different ways to think different ways to talk different walks of life you know um it's 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 been like that for a very long time but as music has evolved so has people's ways of life and different cultures and trends and desires you know like it's it's being advertised and it's being every verse is about somebody's lifestyle about what they have you know and so in a sense we're talking about investing you know people are fully invested into somebody else's lifestyle and way of life that they want to make it their own rather than, rather than creating their own trend, you know? And that, that's what makes it tough in the society. Music is what controls a lot of what people go through. Um, and it's tough. Cherie's <laughs> yeah. gonna go take her godchildren to get some ice cream. What flavors are y'all getting? And can you send me some? I like chocolate chip cookie dough, mint chocolate chip. <laughs> um, I'll take chocolate, sure. I think I think Shabri is in, Arizona, I want to say. Uh, yeah, is you still in Arizona? Yeah, yeah. where in Arizona are you? I she's love Detroit. Arizona. Yeah, she's from Detroit though, but she's yeah, she's from Detroit, but she, I think she's still in um, Arizona. Yeah. Girl, I'm coming to visit. We're all coming. <laughs> to, we're gonna have, no, y'all. Listen up. You heard it here first. We're gonna have financial Friday retreats. We're gonna have like yeah. investing, sharing, winning together, building wealth together. That's, That's what I'm the talking about. Vision. Um, yeah. I would love to hear if you, because I, you're, you're a parent here. I'm not a parent yet. By the way, me either. My uterus <laughs> is <unfinished. laughs> right, I, always, uh -huh. I always joke about that. I'm like people are like how you like your eggs. I'm like unfertilized. But anyway. Really. <laughs> 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 anyway, um, nah. so I know you've got kids. I would like if you want to shed some light, drop some gems, some quick gems in the comments about how you introduce the topic of money and or sex with your children. Um, what you're, you know, because here's the deal. Yep, I'm not a parent yet. Yep, I got nieces and nephews and godchildren as well. But I be talking yeah. to them about the real shit. Because who are they going to hear from but their auntie? That's who they're going right. to hear. Right, right. So, yes, pistachio. Jeremy likes pistachio and chocolate chip cookie dough. We're talking about ice cream, breathe, drop safe. Yes, be safe. Now I want some ice cream. Hey, thanks for joining in. <laughs> so what else do we want to say? We're about to, we're about up, uh, up to the hour. Um, any other real things we want to share with the people about money, sex, since we're talking about relationships, all these taboo topics? And if y'all think that I should have Evan and EJ back on the show, please show them some love by throwing up some hearts, some fire, some thumbs up, some smiley faces in the comments. Maybe, maybe um, something, yeah, you know, maybe something that uh, 
can also pertain to like maybe relationships too, but it's definitely about investing. Don't wait till the last minute. Don't try to invest into crypto or Bitcoin because it's already at like $47,000 a coin. <laughs> like it's extremely high right now. So when you message me or somebody and say, hey, man, should I invest in Bitcoin today? You know, let's, you know, I mean, I want to say yes, but then I want to also say, don't ever ask that, please. Not, not right, not, not right now. But the I thing about I that is. Point zero 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 one of a Bitcoin. I got like $5 worth of Bitcoin. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, like, I think it's because <laughs> of. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, I feel like that's, that's good though. But I think it's just people. I've been who, there though. Uh, I've been there. Yeah. I mean, you are though, but I feel like that's that's a start. I think you know, again, you're you're doing it, and I think you're not you're you're, you're doing it. I already know because of the fact that you're wanting to increase and diversify. But other people are just so social media investing, like they see people's posts and then they just jump at it. And then when I say last minute, I mean like it's it's not a good idea to buy high or sell low. It's a good idea to buy low and sell high, or like actually watch the opportunity. And so. People who don't read charts or really understand what the market does, they just follow somebody's post and, and do it. But there's a science to like understanding it. And that's where you have to, again, research and trust the instincts. And that doesn't just happen overnight, but um, that also can tie into like relationships. And like, I'm absolutely not a relationship guru. But I'm just saying like, that does tie into like understanding your own personal emotion. You know, like your instincts really, really can help you out a lot with everything that you're doing. Um, especially investing, you know. So, yeah, I just feel yeah, like. And lastly, yeah. last thing I'll say is like, don't let nobody freaking shame you out of like your idea or it's out of your strategies, you know. Because yeah. you know, like we, with guru culture, a lot of times, like we have people saying, "Oh, this is this is gambling," or "This is stupid," or "This is that," and it's like, you know, invest based on what you believe and like you don't look for nobody else's approval or what somebody else has to say like who cares what dave ramsey says who cares what robert kiyosaki said who cares what elon musk says mark even <laughs> like i'm not saying that those people aren't you know like proven and where they're proven at but it's like you know like do your own thing and you know what i'm saying like sometimes like like well i won't even say sometimes making mistakes as an investor is necessary if you really truly want to grow like you got to learn how to pick the right companies and you won't know that unless you pick the wrong company so that you can see what mistakes you've made so yeah. it's like you know like as ej said earlier jump in the water and you know just you know sometimes just jumping in the water you 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 you, you got to learn to swim a little bit so you know like 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 you're gonna you're you're gonna learn how to do your proper research and things like that. But sometimes you gotta bump your head. And if you don't wanna bump your head, get you a professional, get you a financial analyst, get you a financial analyst, financial advisor, get you somebody who is a professional that can kind of walk you through those steps to help you start a little different. But if you can't do that, then hey, just 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 go for it. I don't know what I'm meeting you, EJ, because I don't know what's going on with your mic, but um yeah, some like static over there or something like that. The aliens, the aliens are here. The aliens, I the aliens, that's what it is. Um, the aliens. I love what y'all are both saying. And really, I mean, that's the mission. That's that's what we want to do with Financial Fridays. So please join us because you get to join in the conversation and, and have your journey along with us. And we can help you find what your journey is, right? So like me, you know, getting into real estate because real estate, people are always going to need real estate and that's like a, such a good investment. It's fucking not if you don't fucking like it. So <laughs> right, right. You know what I mean? not if it doesn't fit your personality. It's not if it doesn't fit your goals. It's not if what's required to invest in it doesn't fit your lifestyle. Nice. So like for me, when I was like, when I learned that, I was like, yeah, I'm going to do currency. I'm going to do crypto. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to do what, what fits with my personality because I'm a nerd and I love researching nerdy shit, you know? And so if you love it, yeah, look into it. See, like test some things out and see what you like and definitely hop on Clubhouse with us because we can support you in finding that out and just understand that 
your stuff is going to come up, your emotions, your scarcity thinking, your traumas, all kinds of stuff is going to come up. And that's, you know, that's what I'm here for. I'm here to support, massage you through that journey. And of course, we've got these two amazing men here to support you with more of the technical strategies. But I mean, all three of us, I mean, it's just, y'all just got, it's like fireworks, you know, I you can't watch fireworks on TV. You can't mm -hmm. describe fireworks. You got to go see the fireworks. You just got to come on the show stereo and clubhouse and experience it for yourself our last clubhouse yo how magic was that like yeah yeah, that was, yeah that was great that was amazing you, we literally witnessed someone go from like debilitating fear like someone who had some extra money and knew that they wanted to start investing and had this like fear and go into this like Oh my gosh, I totally know what story I want to tell. I totally know what my personality might be. You know, like that person was kind of spiritual and witchy like me. So it was like, yeah, maybe I'll like buy on the new moon and then reap my benefits on the full moon. Like, you, like do what, you, like, and I, that was so freaking cool to hear because that also inspired me because I was like, wait, I didn't even think about that. Like, to ha <laughs> like have your investing fit your personality, you know? Um, so we got some really cool comments here. We got a we got some questions too, yeah. yeah. We got some questions too. So I just want I want to definitely highlight this. I love Jeremy what you're saying. Yeah, mixing sex and money hashtag #onlyfans. Um, there's a lot of <laughs> shit around that. Um, that, that's that's another episode. We can. That's another yeah. episode. Um, <laughs> Jeremy wants to invest in Bitcoin. Um, I'm sure y'all y'all both have something to say to that. We'll we'll come back to that because Jeremy has a yeah. question later. But I want to see. I was okay. I was like, can it fit on the screen? I've never seen a comment this long to try to put on the screen. So mm -hmm. I'll just read it. Um, I brought up finance one on one with the kids. They see how hard I work in both my businesses. When it comes to other topics, I'm honest with my daughter. When it comes to life. She shares the things she's comfortable with, but my main goal is to create a place where judgment ceases to exist. Oh, I love that. Mm -hmm. I'm a hashtag girl dad. Yes. I will. Shout out to all the girl dads and boy moms and girl moms and boy dad moms, whatever. Anyway. <laughs> okay. I'm a hashtag girl dad, and I know what's out there. I don't want her going out into the world blind. I'd rather be the one to open both my kids' eyes. I love that so much. Oh, my God. That's great. Sit both my kids save their money on their own. I'm now pushing them to invest in small places. Yes! This is music to my ears. <laughs> I have money in the stock market that was actually Christmas presents for the kids, but they love seeing their money grow. Y'all, this is the I love future. That. This is the future. I love it. I love it. I love it. Yeah, that's okay. great. And Jeremy that's has great. been here. Daisy, hey Daisy, good to see you here. Okay, are Acorn and Stash good apps for investing? I have accounts in them. What? I don't I mean, know the answer. No. Um, no, so I'm gonna say, you know, that's like, yeah, Acorn and Stash are not the top tier apps to use, you know? Yeah, for like, if you got like some like, you know, like little, like I call them basically pennies that you just wanna like throw in. Right. I mean, why not? But I wouldn't like, for like investing as far as like for a future, no, nah, you 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 probably want to actually open a brokerage account with somewhere like Webull or M1 Finance or Charles Schwab. And you want to be able to go into either individual stocks, ETFs, mutual funds, bonds or whatever like that. But those type of apps, you're not going to you know, those aren't going to be the best type of strategies for investing. I'm, I don't have a problem with them. But I wouldn't recommend them. Like, don't let that be the only thing you have for investing. Is one thing. Yeah, I feel like that's teasing the market. I feel like that's teasing your investing journey. You know, because like, you know, kind kind of like, yeah. I mean, you know, it's like it's. I feel like that's the equivalent of somebody investing in stocks on Cash App. You know, like you're kind of, you know, with the advertisement is investing investing the stock worth a dollar. You know, like, you know, I feel like you're teasing the market a little bit with not kind of going through an actual brokerage account and doing it. So yeah. Um, I agree. By the way, and again, th these are great questions. Feel free to keep them coming. Um, and these are the kind of questions that we can really, we really dive deep into in our clubhouse. And also, I haven't talked about it yet, but we're we're gonna do a workshop to see to see how it goes and to see if it's something people like. 
Um, and we're having one, when are we having <laughs> in a week and just over a yeah. week, February yeah, yeah. 19th at 6 p.m. Eastern, 6 to 8 p.m., two hours. We have a gorgeous worksheet planned for you to see where you're at emotionally and mentally. And then um, there's going to be a Q&A session at the end where we'll be like, again, so stereo is like the radio show where we, we have a conversation. Clubhouse, we, we get a little bit deeper. And then the workshop is like, okay, I'm ready to like roll up my sleeves and, and do some work real time live with, with real people to support me where I can ask questions and really like set up a game plan for my next steps. Um, and it's really a really great opportunity to do that. So if you go to ameliafortes.com slash events, you'll get to sign up for the workshop there. And that's where we'll really get to help you customize your game plan. And again, remember, building wealth is a long, slow, boring process. So just and have fun with it, right? And and find people like if it you know if it's not the three of us, find people that you really feel safe with and comfortable with that you feel like you can vibe with because it's a journey. And honestly, it's it's so much better to not do it alone at least for me, and, and that's what we want to build. We want to build a community of people who just vibe with each other. And y'all know, like, I have big visions. So, like, I envision, like, a whole Financial Friday crew where we've got, like, different people that have, like, similar personalities. You've got, like, your witchy new moon investors over here, your techie investors over here. You know what I mean? Your, your um, EV or, like, organic farm, whatever. Like, you know, and we just all, like, share information and we win together and we lose together and we we invest together that that's really what i want to create i know these guys are on board with that but you know just speaking for myself that's why i'm so passionate and showing up every week the way that i do because i want a world where people who look and sound and live like us are creating financial freedom and not just freedom, like a legacy for generations to come, right? It's not just reserved for certain people anymore. Like we get to take control of that. And, and having the right people around you and in your corner will really, really support that. So, you know, Jeremy, I definitely invite well, all of you to come and share. Like we're really trying to create like a collaborative environment. Again, Age of Aquarius, like I was sharing, collaboration networking, um, finding your people to move forward together. And that, that's what I'm so excited about. So I hope you come to the, to the workshop because we can really dig in deep and answer answer more of those questions. Um, I'm going to look into that. Thanks. Yes, of course, Jeremy. And Jeremy, you, you I just want to say, like I know Jeremy for, for a while. So You've got all the tickets, honey. Like you've got everything you need and you, you know, just make moves. And I'm so excited to, to see how you continue to grow. I know you are just right for this kind of opportunity. We all are. Again, like I said, age of Aquarius, progression. We're all being called. That's why something like Wall Street bets happen because more people were meant to be woken up to the opportunities that are available to them, woken up to the opportunities to take back control of your future, of your life, of everything. And, you know, I'm just humbled to be alongside these guys and to be to be along for the journey. So. Absolutely. No, I, 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 I love it. I'm feeling good. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, we, but we all are now, you know what I'm saying? But it, we're, we're at, the, you know, it's, it's, it's that it's about that time, you know, we are good a few drinks and then so now we are, uh, yeah, we're we're kind of on skates a little bit, and I'm 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 all for it. So it's I mean I enjoyed it. I feel like this is something that's great for people, you know. So I feel like you know now doing this, we reached the, the the Facebook world for the ones who really are inquiring on what we've been doing and what we've been posting about for um for you know uh, financial Fridays. We post our recordings on on Facebook, but I feel like now it's time uh, for us to. Now make that Facebook presence and help people out and help people understand, you know, what we're trying to do here. And so I feel like, you know, this was great. I feel like this was great, you know. And then the engagement that we have. Thank you all for, you know, you know, putting your feedback in. Thank you all for, you know, being engaged because this is what we want. This is absolutely what we want. 
Yeah, guys, like this is this is literally a conversation that like we just have on a regular basis. You guys, we're just recording it and let like, you guys view it. And but this is this is what we do, and we just want to invite other people into the conversation because the more people we get in the conversation, the more lives can change, the more people can be impacted. And you know, um, you know, Amelia says a lot, but uh, you know, it's not. It doesn't have to be a slow, boring process. It can be slow, but it can be fun because when you have a community and you have that support and you have the people around you, you don't have to feel like you're alone and you don't have to feel like you have to have all of the answers because I don't have all of the answers in my 10 plus years of doing this professionally, personally. EJ doesn't have all of the answers, but when you put, when you put, when you put I'm out of here. I'm just kidding. <laughs> you put a and Amelia, you don't too, have the answers, Amelia, Amelia, Amelia doesn't have all of the answers. So like, you know, but when you put a collective of mindsets together, you you're you're going to have better results. So that's what that's that's the vision that we all share is we want to be able to everybody, you know, have these conversations and everybody can win together. And we can grow together. So I thank you guys for tuning in. This is like I said, this is just basically a regular conversation for us, though. <laughs> thank well, you yep, so, so yep. much. I just want you. Oh, EJ, did you want something? You want to say something? Oh no, I was saying I agree. This is just a regular conversation for us. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's why we're kicking back, chilling. Yeah. <laughs> this, is how, this is how we chop up on the red. Yeah. But yeah. um, I just want you both to know. Um, I appreciate you both so much. I'm so happy that we've connected and that we, we, sh we all share this vision to really help people and help ourselves too. I mean, we're all included in that, right? And just forward the financial future of humanity and apparently the sexual and relational future of humanity too. Let's throw that in the mix, right? Um, right. I'm just so, so appreciative of you appreciative of you all of you both and of you all watching. And um, if this has touched or moved you in any way, Please share this with someone. Please join us on Financial Fridays every Friday, 8 a.m. Eastern on yeah, the stereo. Follow us. follow us as well. Follow us. Turn your turn your notifications on for this show. Follow us on Clubhouse. Follow us on Instagram because we got a lot more content we're going to start dropping on all these other yeah, platforms. We, we got plans. We got plans, y'all. Like the three of us, we're always talking and, and figuring out how we can keep moving things forward. So your engagement matters. Your <laughs> involvement matters. And and we just want to serve you. And, and, and we've got lots of plans. So yeah, follow us. Um, catch us on Stereo, 8 a.m. Eastern every Friday. Clubhouse. 1 p.m. Eastern every Friday. And our workshop is on February 19th. We're still gonna figure out if that's something y'all want and how often we wanna do that. We were thinking maybe monthly, quarterly. So it really depends on you. If it's something you want, please sign up for it. Let us know so that we wanna create the content and the opportunities that you want. So you'll let us know the more you engage, right? So if that's the type of thing you want, please sign up for that workshop. Um, let me just throw up that link again, just so y'all have it. Um, and yeah, just keep coming back and just know like you've got this and you could do it alone. But why would you want to when you've got <laughs> other people who want to do it along with you? So thank you so much for being here. EJ, Evan, Yes, I enjoyed it. Yes, y'all have a great night. You know, you're yeah, gonna sleep well. This is a lot of fun. You want you you want a good one. You're gonna sleep good. Masculine energy for my feminine tipsiness right now. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah, you lit lit. You lit lit. Yeah, you gonna be you gonna you be feeling it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good night. Buddy, thank you so much again. If you're watching this on YouTube, please subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell so you can be alerted. And like I said, if this touched, moved, or inspired you, please share this with someone you love. Good night. Bye. Good night, everyone. Good night.